<laughs> I really went to town with those sound effects. Anyway, let me show you how to create this cool masking transition and we'll start with some filming tips. I needed something to drag my camera behind that would function as the reveal when I dragged it through the other side. So in this case, I chose a candle. You need to put your camera on a tripod or something that's gonna keep it from moving at all until you're finished filming, which is important for this effect to work. This could easily be filmed on a smartphone camera, but I'm a sucker for shallow depth of field or background blur. So I went with my mirrorless camera and a 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. To make this work, I set my focus to manual and then focused on the camera body as it was sitting next to the candle specifically. And then every time I would grab it or make a motion, I always tried to keep the camera and the lens at the exact same distance from the camera I was filming with in order to keep everything in focus. If you film with a smartphone camera, everything is more or less gonna be in focus, so you won't really have to worry about that. I filmed a few different takes of me reaching across the counter, grabbing the camera body, and slowly pulling it across the counter. I then attached my 70 to 200, the white zoom lens, and I put it in the same position, and then I filmed a few more takes of me reaching across the counter, grabbing my camera, and slowly pulling it towards me. The more you're able to keep your arm's position, angle, and speed the same each time you film yourself doing a take, the easier it is going to be to blend those things later in post, which is also why we film multiple takes so that you have options to choose from. I drag both clips onto the timeline and do any color grading I may want to do. In this case, I've already done that. I find a take that I like where I'm dragging the camera body across the counter. And to make it easier to line up the next clip, I put the playhead right at the moment where the back of the camera starts passing behind the candle, and then I click M to create a marker. I drag in the second clip and find a take that I like of me dragging the camera with the lens attached across the counter. I put the playhead at the same moment where the back of the camera is about to pass behind the candle, and I create another marker. Now I drag the second clip on top of the top one until the markers are lined up. And I can enable or disable the top clip to see that the cameras are in pretty much the same spot and meaning the clips are lined up, at least at that moment. I right click on the top clip and make it orange so that it's easier to tell the clips apart when I'm in the color page and then I go to the color page. I create a new node after any color grading I've done. I then right click in the empty space and select add alpha output and connect the blue dots. Then I select the window tab and then the pen tool. I want to draw a line that's perfectly lined up along the right side of the candle. So I start by being approximate, and then I keep adjusting the two points until it's spot on. I then complete a box around the right hand side of the screen. I jump over to the edit page and start moving the playhead back and forth. And I can see that everything to the right of the candle is the top clip with the camera body and the lens attached. And everything to the left of the candle is the bottom clip with only the camera body. Now I need to find the best place for the top clip to start, which can take some trial and error. But I know that by the time the camera is passing behind the candle, the movements are pretty lined up, which we've already verified. So I'll try to have the top clip start as the camera is passing behind the candle. Yeah, that actually works really well. However, notice where my arm is when I go to the frame just before the second clip comes in. So we're just looking at the bottom clip. Then when I move forward by one frame, we can now see the top clip. And you can see that my arm jumps a little bit because they weren't quite in the same position when I did each take. Now you can see why it's important to have your movements replicated as similarly as possible each time you do a take. Something we can do to hide that jump a bit is to fade in the top clip. Now it draws less attention to itself because it blends from clip to clip rather than jumping. Now I want to add some camera movement to the shot by starting zoomed in and pulling back as the scene unfolds. So I select both clips, right click and select new compound clip. I put the playhead at the first frame and zoom in until I'm happy with how it looks. And then I click the keyframe buttons next to each of the adjustments I made. I then move the playhead to where I want the zooming out to stop, which is roughly where the camera stops moving, and adjust zoom and position back to their default settings. I then right click both keyframes and select ease in. I then click the left arrow to jump back to the first keyframes we made and select ease out for each of those. This will make the zoom in and out more gradual instead of instant, making it more smooth. So let's take a look at what we have so far. It's already pretty cool and could easily be used as a post exactly as it is, but it would be fun to add a visual effect to heighten the experience even more. If you want to join me for that, use the link in the description to download the Proto plugin for DaVinci Resolve, which comes free from Sterling Supply Company, and follow the included instructions to install it now. I then option drag a copy of the compound clip to the next track above, and then right click and select New Fusion Clip. I only need this clip to last the length of the effect when the white lens is being revealed. So I make the clip start just a little bit before that moment and end just a little bit after. I make sure the playhead is over the fusion clip and go to the fusion page. I click in the empty space and then select the B spline tool using this icon right here. I put the playhead where the full length of the white lens can be seen. Then I draw a line that's roughly the same height as the lens. 
Then I move the playhead before the lens can be seen and adjust the line so that it stays on top of the right edge of the candle. Now you can see that our line stays on the right edge of the candle even as our shot zooms out. I select media in one and add a merge node, then connect B spline to the merge node. Making sure B spline is selected, I turn up the border width so it's just above zero. I then make sure position is at zero and length is at one. Making sure B spline is still selected, I hit shift spacebar and type in proto, which is the effect I had you install earlier. Find it in the list and hit add. With Proto V2 selected, I go over and select User, and then select Electro. I go down to Colorize and choose the color I want this effect to be. I like this sort of reddish-orange color. I go back to the Edit page and fade this clip in right where I want this effect to start and fade it out where I want it to end. In order to get this new Fusion clip to play smoothly in the timeline, I go up to Playback, and then Render Cache, and choose Smart. And then I wait for this red line to turn blue, which means the fusion clip has been rendered in the background and can now be played back smoothly. And the last thing I did was add some sound effects, export that bad boy, and boom, you got this crazy looking masking effect. You can also use masking to create epic looking transitions from shot to shot. And I show you how to do that in this video right here. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Ah.